into the flight of Starship, 33 Raptor engines Acquisition powering the first stage. Up, power and telemetry nominal. We've heard power and telemetry nominal call out. We're heading downrange over the Gulf of Mexico. Acquisition signal for Chris Christie. We're throttled down and throttled back up. Going through the period of maximum aerodynamic pressure. And that call-out tells us Starship is through the period of greatest stress on the way to space. Now the next major event is hot staging in just over 90 seconds from now. To get ready, the booster will shut down all but three of the Raptor engines. Flames holding the two stages together will release, and the Starship's second stage will ignite its engines. Starship will then separate from the Super Heavy booster and head to space. 100 seconds into flight. Our next major activity is going to be shut down of the first stage. The Houston tracking station now acquiring the vehicle. With shutdown, we will get separation of Starship from Super Heavy and ignition of the Starship engines. When Starship separates, we light up six engines in a staggered sequence. And if all goes well, those six engines will burn for almost six and a half minutes. Onboard view from Starship. Engine power continues to look nominal on 33 Raptor engines. We're about to shut down the first stage and perform staging. Let's watch and listen. Back maneuver for landing in the Gulf. Continuing to fly, two minutes, 40 seconds. Let's get ready for main engine cutoff. Booster engine cutoff. Beginning the flip. Stage separation. Boost back shot up. Incredible views of our super heavy booster. And as you can see, the super heavy booster has just experienced a rapid unscheduled disassembly. However, our ship is still underway with ship all Avionics, six. Power and telemetry nominal. And we just heard there, ship yeah, Kate, right now it looks like we saw the start of the flip, but obviously we're seeing from the ground cameras the entire Starship stack continuing to rotate. We should have had separation by now. Obviously, this is uh, does not appear to be a nominal situation. Yeah, it does appear to be spinning, but I do want to remind everyone that everything after clearing the tower was icing on the cake. is uh, on its way. As like we said, you can see all six of its engines are ignited. The next major milestone for the ship uh, will be the shutdown of those engines, or SECO, second engine cutoff, which if you follow our Falcon 9 launches, familiar terminology there. Live view there of our control center at Starbase. Uh, which we refer to as Star Command. <laughs> as we said before, obviously we wanted to make it all the way through, but to get this far, honestly, is amazing. <laughs> well, if you're just joining us, Starship just experienced what we call a rapid unscheduled disassembly or a RUD during ascent. But now this was a development test. This is the first test flight of Starship, and the goal was to gather the data and as we said, clear the pad and get ready to go again. Little dot on your screen, it did. 
Uh, we also want to uh, basically demonstrate that the successful startup of, that, uh, of those engines, demonstrating controlled ascent, which is what it's doing right now, um, and eventually orbital insertion. Uh, we are hoping to basically send this around the Earth and if it makes it this far, splash down in the Pacific Ocean um, a couple hundred miles north of Hawaii. Now, if we get that far, like all of that sounds great. Secondary objectives for SHIP, again, continuing to gather engine data and about its health, performance. Nominal um, ship chamber pressures. Great news there. That tells us that the chamber pressures inside of the Starship, again, that's that small dot on your screen, the, basically the propellant um, pressures in the ship are looking good. Yeah, the bottom right corner of your screen, you can see uh, essentially a, a user interface showing us which engines are lit. So the three center sea level Raptor engines on ship are gimbling engines. The three outer engines in the triangle, the larger ones are Raptor vacuum engines. All of them continuing to file fire nominally, so they're at the pressures that we expect to try to get uh, into our target trajectory today. Yeah. And we're not targeting orbit today. We're targeting almost orbit today. Um, that's very intentional as part of the mission design. The goal is to get to a thrust profile similar to what we would need for orbit, but also and to get to the energy the levels season. that the ship would need to dissipate for re-entry. And so we're actually going in a suborbital trajectory today, but that trajectory will get us to the energy levels that we need at re-entry, where we can really stress that heat shield and get valuable data on re-entry. And those calls that we are still on a nominal trajectory here and seeing nominal pressures means that we have a really good shot of hitting our target orbit. Yeah. Now, if the booster had survived, uh, we would be uh, around the time where it would be uh, getting ready to land, performing its uh, re-entry, but it unfortunately did not survive. Uh, that being said, that's okay. It survived several Carol, seconds after uh, hot staging, so we're going to take that data and improve the hot staging sequence and, and probably improve the hardware itself uh, for the next flight. are standing by for a call out here. Coming up on the projected time that ship would shut down its engines. As you can tell by the excitement from the crowd here at Mission Control Center in Hawthorne, uh, there's a great view of our Star Command Center. That's our control center at Starbase Texas. The crowd here, Mission Control Center, behind us in Hawthorne, everyone is super exciting. What a successful day this has been so far. And I mean, up to this point, major successful milestones through hot staging, which was the big objective today. So we are going to head into the coast phase uh, planned for the next about hour and five minutes. We'll be returning around the T plus one hour and 15 minute mark. And that's while we're waiting for Starship to continue on to its next step for reentry. We're not totally sure what video we're going to get, um, and that video comes normally by overflying ground stations, but we don't have a ton along our flight path. So fingers crossed that we will get some via Starlink on this mission since we're testing that out. The 
can also give us a moment. We are hearing some chatter on the net, so we're going to try to parse that for you. John Esperger back here in Hawthorne at our webcast desk. We have lost the data from the second stage. We had heard a call out that we were internal guidance, which means we were getting near the end of the approximately six minute burn of Starship. But we haven't uh, gotten any more data since then. So we think we may have lost the second stage. So we would not be into coast phase. We wouldn't be able to come back in an hour or so uh, and possibly get ready for reentry. However, what we do know right now is we had an on-time launch at 7 o'clock. Uh, we got through the boats. First stage looked beautiful with 33 Raptor engines firing. We got the hot staging, you know, the thing that we really wanted to see and impressed. We saw the separation. We saw the flip maneuver. We saw the light up of the six Raptor engines on Starship and it headed away. Everything really looked good. But what we do believe right now is that the automated flight termination system on second stage appears to have triggered very late in the burn as we were headed downrange out over the Gulf of Mexico. But the real topping on the cake today, that successful liftoff, Kate, Shiva, the hot staging is just, yeah. just beautiful. Exactly what we were looking for. Yeah, ultimately, what honestly such an incredibly successful day even though we did have um, a rud or a rapid unscheduled disassembly of both the super heavy booster and the ship that's great we got so much data and that will all help us to improve for our next flight of course and that's why we flight test and you can bet that there's going to be more to come so we really do want to thank you all for joining us of course we want to thank the people of cameron county we want to thank all the federal agencies that have supported us for our, our tests and, and of of course, a huge congratulations to the entire SpaceX team on getting through this flight test today. And I think with that, we're going to sign off from here in Hawthorne. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.